Welcome back. In this video, we will see what to do after we import the data from Power Query. If you have not seen the previous videos, I strongly suggest you follow the playlist so you understand better. In the earlier videos, we saw how to import data from various sources and clean it up using Power Query. Now that the data is inside Power BI Desktop, we can improve it so that we can perform better analysis. Some people call it shaping, modeling, I just call it improving. There are four ways to improve the data. Groups and roles we will see in a separate video. But right now, let's focus on relationship. So let's look at the data we have. In this case, I have three tables. Transactions, which contains 1500 rows. Each transaction shows us on which day, using which type of credit card, what was purchased, what was the gender, age and amount. We also have a city ID column, but we don't have the name of the city. The names of cities and countries are in a separate table, which is here. Now, of course, in real life, you would have done a VLOOKUP to get this city name in the original data. But here we will do something different. Just to make it more interesting, I have one more table which just has two columns, the name of the country and a link to the image of the flag. When we import tables, they come into this area called data. But when you go to the third one called model, the same three tables are shown like this. Data is not shown, only the columns are shown. These are the tables. On the right side, we see some things called properties. And this is the same list of tables and fields. At this point, we have no relationships. Now, if I go to create a report and I want country and total transactions. So I'm going to drag and drop country. And I'm going to drag and drop amount. I don't want to see it as a map. I just want to see it like a pivot table. Pivot table is called a matrix. So notice for all countries, the amount is same. Where did this amount come from? It's the total of all transactions. So this is not really working. Why is it not working? Because the three tables which we have need to know how they are related to each other. And that is done in the relationships tab. I know that city ID is supposed to be connected to the city number. So I drag and drop from here to here. And now that the connection is established, notice what happens. It gives you the correct results. Whether you drag it from transaction to cities or cities to transaction does not matter. When you highlight it or hover on the relationship, it shows you the columns on either side. The names of the columns need not be same, but the data has to be related. One additional requirement is there is a number one here. What does that mean? For every city, there has to be only one entry here. If there is a duplicate number, this is not going to work. On the transaction side, the number is not there. It's an asterisk. Means what? Many. So this, in technical terms, is called a one-to-many relationship. Now let's do the same thing between these two tables. In this case, I don't have a code. It's just the name of the country. So I'm going to drag and drop country to country. And like this, you build relationships. Now we will see how to set properties for each of the columns. Properties are for the table or for a column. So if you are not selected either of them, properties windows is empty. Whether it is a table or a column, we have some common properties. So let's go to a column and understand what else it does. Now amount is the name which was imported. If you change the name here, it will change it in the transform table as well. Even if you refresh the data, the change name 
will remain. Usually, if it's a complex data model and you have chance that people may not understand what each column means, it's a good idea to give a description. Now, what is the point? Where is this useful? So let's go to our dashboard. Now, if I hover the cursor on amount, it is going to show you this. It's not going to affect the analysis itself, but it makes it easier for people to understand it. These tool tips come only in the fields area, not on the visualization itself. There is a very interesting thing called synonyms. Let's understand what that means. One very interesting and very useful method of analyzing data is just to ask questions. That's called Q&A. There's a visualization called Q&A. You can add that or you can just double click on an empty area. Notice it shows the same visual. What is it saying? Ask a question about your data. As long as you know the names of the columns, you can type the question which you have in mind. For example, I want to know total amount. Notice what happened. Now, of course, it is going to understand only the field names which are existing. But in real life, even if the name of the column is called amount, from a business point of view, we call it revenue. Now, if I type total revenue here, obviously, it doesn't understand what to do and it shows you a red underline. So in order to make it simpler for people to use these kind of business words, independent of the column names, what can we do? So we come back here. Click on the amount and here we specify different types of synonyms. Just put a comma and of course I could have called it something else. So now any of these words or BI will understand actually pertains to the amount column. So now when I go back, it understands what is revenue and gives me the details. This is a very useful feature for simplifying analysis and interactive exploration. In this case, we have very few columns, but in real life, there can be multiple tables as well as columns. And sometimes you may want to group them. And that is done by specifying a folder name. For demo purpose, I am going to create a folder called numbers and we'll map all the numeric fields below that folder. So notice numbers is a folder and amount went under it. I also want year to go under it. So there are two ways of doing it. Either I click on year and type the folder name or I can just drag the field and make sure I drop it on top of the folder. So now it came under this. I will do the same thing for age. So bottom line, these folders are useful for simplifying the structure of the fields. In our data, you will notice that we have multiple columns which are not very useful. For example, I have city ID here and the equivalent column called number in the city's table. I am never going to use them in my reports. So why complicate matters and have a long list of unwanted columns? That is why you can hide such columns. How do you do that? For example, here, I want city ID to be hidden. So you just click on hidden. If you want multiple columns to be hidden, of course, you can multi select as well. So in this case, I'm going to choose country as well as number. And I can either shut it off from here or I can right click and say hide from report view. The impact is same. You get an icon like this, which means the field is very much there, but it will not be shown in the report view. So as you can see here, unwanted columns are no longer visible, making it easier. So it's a good idea to go through each column and make sure it has the correct data type. Click on here. This is a whole number. Format is whole number. There are different types of formats depending on which type of column you have selected. For example, if you choose a date type of data, it gives you various formats 
or different types of date expressions. So that's all there is. Click on each data column and make sure it has the correct data type and correct formatting. Look at what happens when I go to a report and drag and drop here. By default, it does this, but let's see it in simple value by converting it to a matrix. Notice it is actually summed the year. We know that year is a number, but there is no point in doing a sum of year. So to prevent that from happening, we want to tell Power BI that even though year is a number, never sum it. How do you do that? You go to the year column, scroll down and say summarize by what? We don't want any summary at all. So you say none. On the other hand, there is age. Age is also a number. You typically want average. So let's change the summary to average for age. And for amount, we will keep it as it is, which is sum. So that is how the summarize by column is used. If you are used to Excel, you will expect that when you drag drop month, it will be sorted in Jan, Feb, March order. But if you do that here, it is not sorted in the expected order. It's actually sorted in alphabetical order. Excel understands this because Excel has some special feature called custom list, which is already predefined. Or BI does not have custom list. So even though the column name is month, the data inside is just text. So it sorts it by alphabetical order. If you want any column to be sorted in a particular order, then it's a good idea to use another special feature that is called sort by column. What we really want is month should be sorted not on the month text, but the month number. We don't have such a column, so we'll have to add that. How do you add a new column? Let's go to data view and we will say new column. It adds a new column and also opens out the formula bar. I can specify the name of the column here itself. I'll call it month number. The formula is very simple. We already have a date column. We will use the month function to get the month number. So month is the function. It shows you the syntax like in Excel. Square bracket allows you to choose columns like in an Excel table. And I'm going to choose the date column. Press tab to select. And now let's complete the bracket. This is how you add the calculated column inside Power BI. So now I come back to the properties view, select the month column. And this time we say don't sort it by month, but sort it by month number. And the moment you do that, the sorting order is automatically corrected. Now remember, this is not just for sorting months. In business context, maybe we want cards to be sorted in a particular order. There also you can use sort by column. Finally, there is another very interesting way of improving data. That is called data category. If you see all the columns, the data category is uncategorized. Now, what are these categories? Let's look at this one. This is a city, but in real life, it's just text. Notice data type text, format text. But we want to specify and inform Power BI, don't treat it like text. Treat it like a geographical location. And that is done from here. So when you open data category, there are many of them. All these are related to geographical locations. So in this case, I am going to categorize this as city. Coincidentally, the column name happens to be city, but that's not required. Now, same way, we are going to categorize this as country. Now, what happens when we set it as country and city? In the field list, you will see a small earth icon there. So now when you drag and drop country, it will not treat it like text. By default, it will use a map. Lastly, there is another very useful category for incorporating pictures and websites. Here is our flags table which has country name and the URL of 
the flag, the web address of the flag. At this stage, if I drag and drop the flag on report, it just shows me the URL, which does not make any sense. So that is again where we have to use data categories. So I click on the flag and this time I choose the data category as image URL. Once that is done, it doesn't show the URL, it actually shows the flags. So now we can use pictures inside our dashboards to make them interactive. For example here, when you click on a flag, the data is filtered by that particular country. Whatever we saw as column properties is also available in the menu. So if you choose a particular column in the data view, you will see column tools. And most of the options we have seen in the properties pane are also available there. I showed you the property pane approach because in a single place, you can set all properties. That is how using Power BI Desktop, we can improve the usage of the data by using relationships and properties. That's all for now in this video. Groups and roles we will see in the upcoming video. Thank you.